Hi there and welcome to this tutorial on augmented reality and this time we're going to be looking at Spark AR. Now Spark AR is quite an interesting augmented reality studio tool uh, from Facebook and now actually you know Meta as they've just changed their name to. Now one of the things which I find interesting about Spark AR is that it's actually been developing quite a lot so lots of people use it for making Instagram filters and sort of uh, basics sort of filter apps, you know, which you can see on lots of other platforms and stuff. I've recently seen a good example of this being used by Ray-Bans for one of their advertising campaigns for their new Ray-Ban glasses, which is in um, connection with uh, Facebook as well. But one of the interesting things is we've just had the 2021 Facebook keynote speeches and Mark Zuckerberg in that talked about how Spark AR is going to be used to make more tools and he alluded to the fact that actually you're going to be able to augment the real world now with other devices and Spark AR is actually going to be at the forefront of that along with a few of the other Adobe products. So it's quite an interesting time to pick up Spark AR and start to learn it. Um, and one of the other good things about Spark AR is it doesn't require much if any coding at all so it's actually very user friendly and this is central to Meta's um, I suppose their plan on what they're trying to do is trying to get lots of people involved in creating the metaverse as they see it and the products for the metaverse. So it's really important that it's a very accessible tool and that people can create these augmented reality experiences. And one of the first things you're going to need to do is download Spark AR. Now you can download it from here and you're also going to be prompted to sign up for Spark AR as well using your Facebook account. So you'll have to do those things first. But once you've downloaded it and it's available for iOS and for um, Windows as well, if I just open up Spark AR Studio, I will come to this screen here. And just briefly, you can have a look at some templates and you can adapt some of these templates as well. So that's quite a nice way of getting started as well. And see this face mask here? This is the sort of thing we're gonna be doing today, just do it sort of painting on someone's face. Um, and we'll be using Photoshop as well to do that. Um, I'm going to create a blank project. And once I've created a blank project, um, I'm going to just close my tips for later. I'll just take you around the actual interface here, first of all, to get you started. So over on the right hand side, we have mainly the properties window. Uh, this gentleman here, what, what uh, this is basically, it's a representation of a mobile device and different people's reactions. And if I go over to the video side on the left hand side here, I can choose different people so I can see how my effects are gonna work with uh, different skin tones, different hair colors, beards, um, all sorts of things that are just gonna help differentiate the user. I can also choose the integrated camera and that'll actually show your own webcam so you can test it live on your own face as well. Um, down here I have assets that I can import from um, my library so I hopefully I'm going to assume that you've had some sort of experience with some design tools before because importing assets might be something that you do in say uh, Photoshop or After Effects or something like that and you can just import them and then you can use them later in the projects and drag them in. Um, if I just close that again here, uh, this scene here, this is a hierarchy of all the usable sort of devices and stuff and all the, the different things you can do. So we've got our camera in here and we can see the camera pointing at the person here. We've got focal distance so we can actually change the focus. There's different lighting effects you can do. And we've also got the option for audio as well. Now to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to add an object. And um, at the moment, there is a face tracker, a plane tracker, a target tracker, a hand tracker. Now, one of the interesting things is there's a version just about to come out now which can do full body tracking as well. And that's going to be really important for some of the augmented reality experiences, maybe where we um, interact with objects in front of us and we need to be able to do them. You could create dancing programs with those sorts of things or lots of other crazy sort of uh, effects. Um, what I'm looking for here is the face mesh. So I'm going to click on face mesh and I'm going to insert it. Now it always looks a bit off, um, off center here in the middle picture, but if we look at the camera, it looks absolutely perfect there. And we can see we've got this face mesh now, which is tracking this lady's face. And if I wanted to check it on another face, I can just go to the video 
and switch it to this gentleman and you can see that his face is being tracked really effectively as well. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a material. So if I click on add material, I've now got a material and you can see down here in the materials window, I've actually got a material attached to this. Now you can change the quality of these mirror materials and stuff, but for the moment, what we're going to do is we're just going to leave this material and then we're going to download a face asset and we're going to draw on it in Photoshop and then attach that Photoshop image, which we've created to this material. So for the moment, we've got the face here. Now, I'll leave a link for this underneath the project, but you're going to need to go and download these face assets. And these are the face reference assets. And you can download them by clicking on this link here and you'll download a zip file. And if I just do this and extract all, okay. And here are my face assets and textures. And inside these textures, I get a feminine face and a masculine face. I'm just gonna use the masculine face and I'm gonna open this up with Photoshop. And here we are. So we've got this um, unraveled version of the, it's kind of like a UVW map of a, of a face of a man. And what I'm gonna do inside Photoshop is I'm just gonna create a new layer and then I can just paint on this using the paintbrush. You can even import sort of like PNGs and JPEGs and all sorts of things and put them on this person's face as well. Um, so you can experiment with that if you want. For the moment, what I'm just gonna do is on top of this new layer, I'm just gonna bring down the hardness maybe. And I wanna do something really quick just so you can quickly see what you can start experimenting with. So maybe I'll sort of like paint around the face here. Now I need to be able to see that face underneath, right? So I'm um, doing this ever so quickly. Maybe I'll get a hard eraser rather than um, going around the face there. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Let's get a slightly smaller face there. And I'll just go around the edge just to be very quick. You know, I'm not gonna do anything that looks amazing here. This is just to show you a sort of like a working principle of the things you can do inside of this. That'll do for the moment, right? Let's bring it up, just check it out, that's okay. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, and then perhaps what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna get some black, maybe, and I'll do this on a new layer here. And I'm gonna get a slightly bigger brush. Okay, it's just been Halloween here, so maybe I'll do something a little bit Halloween-y maybe, um, just to quickly show you. Let's see if that's about right. Maybe a slightly thinner brush for these bits. Now you could spend ages doing some really cool stuff on this, right? Oh, I don't know that last one, let's undo that. Okay, so now we've got a kind of a, a bit of a sort of like a face there. Maybe give it two nose bits here. I'll do that there, that there. Okay, I'll bring the opacity back up on this because the opacity will stick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hide that face layer and I'm gonna save this as, so if I'll, and now in the newer version of Photoshop, by the way, if you're unaware of this, you can't just save as a PNG, you have to save as a copy now for PNG. So I'm gonna save as a copy PNG and I'll just save it into here. So I'll call this um, Okay, save that in there. In back into Spark AR, I'm gonna click on material here and it says texture. Now you can see from the properties window, whatever object I'm clicking on, I'm always getting different sort of properties for it. Um, I'm gonna choose a file, scary face, open. And there we go. He's wearing the scary face. Now there's different blend modes here that I'm on already. And actually, if you put it on replace, it, it basically replaces the entire face. Or if you want it to sort of, you know, blend in a bit more, you might just put a bit of an alpha on it or something. Um, there's lots and lots of options there for you to play with. 
And that's basically how easy it is to create a Instagram filter, you know, a very basic one. And it's a fantastic tool to learn because it is just so simple to get to grips with and start creating some really fun experiences. And remember, if you want to try this on your own face now, all you've got to do is go up to video and click on integrated camera. Also, you could flick back into Photoshop if you wanted, just change this to a different face now. And then you've got a second one as well. Once you've completed your video, you can go down to the little publish setting down here. And then you can publish the effect and you can record a demo. And then it takes a couple of days to get approved. But then once it's approved, you can post it on to Instagram and other places as well, like Facebook. And then it can be used on all your sites and you can get millions of people using your uh, filter. So that, there you go. That's a really little easy AR tutorial. And please subscribe for more AR content that's coming up soon.